made it on time. <laughs> Just from Hong Kong in the soundtrack cruise. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's the same thing. The, the biggest disease on the planet is uh, sleep deprivation, <laughs> right? <laughs> Who thinks they slept enough tonight last night? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay, she's not a customer. <laughs> 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 Who, who thinks they haven't slept enough? And that's, uh, yes, that anywhere in the world, sleep deprivation is the biggest disease on the planet. Low hanging fruit. Okay. So, Philip, you are the CEO of Full Power, the technology behind, um, the company behind the MotionX. And you are also a serial innovator in the Silicon Valley. So, can you uh, tell us a bit more about yourself and the technology you? Invented? Well, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a technologist by by culture, so I never think about business. I never think about making money because I always tell people if they're trying to make money, they should get a money making machine, a printer, put it in their basement, make money, and that would be probably a shorter route to making money. But I'm really always focused on trying to build really great technology, putting a great team together, and building stuff that's different, that's unique, and that's ahead of the time. And I was lucky enough that it worked out for me a few times. But sometimes it's pretty scary at one time or another. I mean, I tell you, two or three years ago when we were talking to, about wearable to people, they were looking at us like, are you stupid? Everything's Web 2.0. Uh, you know, I mean, because that was the fashion. Oh, you're, you're not a social network. Who cares about wearable? But now everybody, nobody cares about social networks anymore, and everybody cares about wearable. But so, you know, that's really the, the thing. You're, every time you take a leap of faith and you pour everything you have, put it all back on the table and, and make it work. And, but it's all based on technology, not trying to build a business. Building a business is, is easy. Technology and finding a sweet spot in the market, that's hard. I mean, you can learn to build a business at, at Stanford and getting an MBA. That's an easy thing to do. But, uh, you know, the, the rest, the invention, et cetera, that's something that you have to be creative and get a great team of people to be creative with you. It's even harder when it comes to stuff like wearable, where technology becomes more and more important. It's a bit back to the future. For a long time, you know, if you had an idea for something like Groupon, you could become a billionaire. Something simple, technically simple, like Google and Facebook. These things are not technically complicated, but it was more of a marketing angle. But in, in the world of wearable, I think people need to be aware of the fact that technology becomes important because things have to become very small, miniature, and uh, and have to work, be accurate, and and, and be meaningful. So it becomes a very a technology game, and that's harder. Okay, so. Can you tell us how MotionX is different from the other solution in the market? Um, how are we different? Um, we came at this with the idea that things have to become extremely small, have to become extremely low power. Our ideal design is infinite battery life. So, for example, if someone releases a watch and tells you, oh, we have a, a big a smart watch, we have big breakthrough, we can last for four days. We say people are not going to do that. You're not going to, every four days, want to recharge your device. If it's a device you're supposed to wear 24-7. So the challenges of power management are real challenges. And, and, and the, wear, the world of wearable is going into different directions. There's a bigger direction, devices that can carry a big battery and a big processor, something like a smartwatch. And then there are smaller devices like these, which become more like fashion accessories and that, that are going to get smaller and have, at the end, uh, infinite battery life, which, which address a different part of the market. So what we were interested at is that not trying to cram technology that you already have in your iPhone or your Galaxy phone into a smartwatch, but rather reinvent how we're going to create devices with eternal battery life that are extremely small and that industrial designers can do fashion with. And I think this is one of the big things about the up band is that that was kind of the vision is to give guys like Yves Béa, who was the designer of the ID, the tools, the technology that he needed to make something really cool. This is just a first iteration. There's much more coming. And so 
Imagine these things becoming smaller, uh, battery lives increasing all the time. So this is where where our advantage is. Is like you know we already last two weeks on a device like this, and that's you know any technology that's shipping in a commercial product, and these guys are shipping millions of units right now of the UP24, is two years old on the drawing board in our side. So we're what you're seeing is what we could do two years ago with power management, with functionality. And what we'll see next is what we do next, what we're, we've been working on for the last few years. Because there's a big lag between having the technology that's in there and taking it to market with a consumer electronics product. So, okay, for, in your opinion, for a startup, what is the um, most difficult challenge uh, to face when uh, bringing a wearable device in the market? Well, it depends what meaning uh, what, what bringing a wearable device to the market is. If you're trying to make a Pebble kind of, you know, become, you know, go on in, Indiegogo or, or Kickstarter and say, hey, I have a new smartwatch, I have a new job on band, and I'm going to crowdfund it and all that, that's a different problem than if you're saying, I'm going to solve a particular challenge with an existing device, like, I don't know, I'm going to take the new Samsung gear or the, and, and create an app for it or something like that or I'm going to build something to complement what the job on guys do. So it really depends. So in the first case, if you're going to create something new, I think you're going to meet a lot of challenges because, you know, the end-to-end the -end solution, guys, it's almost like those wars are almost over. They were really fought two years ago, and uh, the survivors and the, small, and the small size are basically Nike, Jawbone, and Fitbit. In the smartwatch side, it's going to be Samsung, perhaps Apple, depending on when and what they release. And perhaps a couple of them, we hope the Pebble guys will, will, will be around. But it's been challenging, as you know. And so it, it, it's harder to, to come in. Like, you know, when you're a small company, you got to come in really early like Pebble did. And, you know, they carved their space. But now if someone wants to come up against Samsung or Apple and all that, it's hard. So the best thing when you're small is not to wake up the big giants and have them stamp on you, but just compliment what they do. That would be my advice, but then, you know. Well, uh, we have seen like uh, crazy funding on Kickstarter, like Oculus, or even like Emotive Insight. So those are startups getting tons of funding on Kickstarter. So don't you think that those people, they will make it? Oh, I, I sincerely, I, I make small companies, you know, I'm, 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 not, a, I'm not a big company person. I, I'm, uh, you know, I, uh, I end up being part for a while of big companies when our companies get acquired or, yeah, we did IPOs and stuff like that. But my, my, um, my hope is that there's many successful startups on Kickstarter and all that because that's where my heart is. And my heart is there. My mind is that getting funded is never a problem. It's like getting venture capital. It's never a problem. You, you know, in this industry, you say wearable, and you, 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 they throw money at you. So that's easy. Uh, but that's a temporary solution. That's, you know, that doesn't mean you're going to be successful. The key is, can you establish a profitable, cash-generating, self-sustaining growth business? Ultimately, you have to do that. Unless you try to build something and you want Google to buy it or something like that, which is fine, but that's not something I'm not a specialist of. I mean, you know, that's a different game. But I think that if you're going to say, I'm going to, you know, get crowd fun funding, and which is great, and build something that's fantastic and be successful. Now, turning that into a profitable uh, growth business, that's, that's a challenge. I mean, Pebble, I think, is, is a great example of a successful company. And it's not absolutely 100% clear, you know, how, if Pebble is going to be an independent company five years from now. You, you know what I mean? They were there early with a great success, or probably the greatest success of all. Right? Okay. Um, we are seeing now uh, explosive growth in uh, wearable uh, computing uh, shipments. What's your take on that? The, the size of the... Of the, the, growth of the growth of the shipments. Like in 2013, yeah, the shipments, the number uh, of device shipped by, by people. Yes. It's huge. We can see that because, you know, 
the Jawbone guys are our partners, and we have other partners in the business, and the, the numbers are huge, and it's growing. And, you know, uh, we're, we're introducing devices in China and Japan and all sorts of places right now. And so the, even the U.S. numbers are small. Uh, so so the, the, the growth numbers are going to be huge. Uh, the more noise Samsung, Apple, and all these guys make, the, the more exciting the market becomes. And there's one thing that's important. When the price of these things is around $100, uh, people will buy, people who have the disposable income, it's not that they won't buy one or the other. They will buy potentially several, right? They'll just look at it and, and they go, oh my God, you know, I, I want a red one, I want a blue one, and I want a round one whatever it is. So, uh, you know, in, in many respects, it, it, it's, a, it's not like a phone. You only have one phone number. You can have multiple wearable devices. This is why the wearable space is going to be the largest industry for a long time. It's because you can have all sorts of devices, all sorts of types of devices, all sorts of, of devices of the same type that you wear in different ways that will look differently, and that work together. There's no reason that you can't do that. So it's going to be a huge market. It's going to be probably the in units, in volume, mm -hmm. the biggest market of all because there's no question, in my opinion, that the average smartphone user will have probably five wearable devices. So five wearable devices at a hundred bucks is five hundred dollars, and a smartphone is five hundred dollars. And so it's it's going to be a huge market. So it was said in a previous panel, most fitness devices are similar. So beyond the motion uh, monitoring, what do you see as uh, the most interesting application coming up? Well, first, I don't think most are similar. I think the specs are similar, but the execution is very different. If you look at, for example, sleep, uh, uh, we were talking about sleep, how everybody's sleep deprived. Sleep monitoring is radically different. A lot of people claim they do it, but they don't do it accurately. And they're, they're, if you do any clinical trial, you'll find out that it's random what they do, they just, you know, some guy. talking about motion only, so now. Yeah. So, for example, I mean, uh, motion, you know, doing pedometers is, is, can be easy and can be complex. It depends how accurate you want to be, but you're right. Activity monitoring is, is fairly trivial and, and, and we can do more. But doing it with great battery life, very small form factors, that's where the differentiation is. You know, I always say if you take a big enough motor, you can make a rock fly. That's not very elegant. You want to make nice gliding airplanes. So for that, we can only have, you know, if we have a, you know, a, a very nicely designed airplane, we can have a very small motor. So I think that at the end of the day, it's going to be a technology game because what people buy is not tech and specs. I'm not talking about people in this room. It's not the same people who will buy Google Glass or something. The Mr. and Mrs. Everyone who buys brands, who really cares about what they look like, cares about fashion, they're going to want industrial design. The only way you can get industrial design if you're not constrained by the technology. So in my opinion, the technology is differentiated by its ability to incarnate itself, encapsulate itself in great industrial design. That's not as easy to do as one thinks because you know, a, a big smart watch is basically a digital watch that nobody bought. In fact, if you think about the digital watch business, it's a small business. If you look at how many digital watches, forget smart watches, were sold before, it's a small business compared to Rolex, who sells $5,000 watch with a cost of $150, but it's a brand thing. People buy a Rolex not because it's worth $5,000, it's because it's a great brand, but it costs them $150, so it's a massively profitable business. But from a spec standpoint, the $29.95 uh, digital watches are way better. But nobody bought them. And now we're having a, 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 a re-attempt at the, at the digital watch with the smartwatch saying, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to give me notification. I can see my text and all that. But guess what? The reason people didn't buy those useful watches before is because they weren't fashion accessory. I mean, you wouldn't wear a watch like that, would you? I have the pebbles. I have the pebbles too. Yeah, but are you wearing I, it? I, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, no, but actually, I asked the CEO. Ladies, ladies sorry, in the room, I, would you be caught with a digital watch? Probably not. I mean, you know. I asked the CEO for a female version. You would, you would. And it's not there yet. Normally, but I'm charging them. Oh, you charge? Oh, you charge. <laughs> I have misfit shine. So, so when you when you go on a on a real important date, you know, in a fancy restaurant, you wear your digital watch I and do. check. 
They do. Okay, well, but, but they need to gentlemen, be uh, 